and with a $90 million deal, and on and on and on. So the question is, is this incompetence or is this by design? We've seen weapons transferred to uh, al-Qaeda terrorists in Syria from Benghazi. We've seen weapons transferred to uh, al-Qaeda terrorists in Syria from Iraq itself. And now those equipped and trained al-Qaeda terrorists, those that uh, Dennis Kucinich and uh, Ted Cruz said we we're going to act as the Air Force for al-Qaeda in Syria, now those Syrian al-Qaeda, with the weapons and the training that we've given them, are now going into Iraq. It is part of a planned takedown. Now, I've listened to a lot of mainstream conservative radio hosts talking about how this is an existential threat to the Middle East, saying it's an existential threat to America. In other words, it threatens the very existence of America, what's going on with ISIS. Well, it does, but in a very different way. It threatens it by the bankruptcy of America, by turning this military industrial complex loose on the American public. Just look what they spent on these boats. The U.S. spent $3 million on boats for landlocked Afghanistan. That's right, $3 million for just eight patrol boats. And they make this point, and the Washington Post is making this point. Number one, Afghanistan is landlocked. Number two, not a single boat has arrived in Afghanistan, even though they bought them four years ago in 2010. And look at this, the third thing, even though you could get these boats for $50,000 in the United States, and I think looking at those boats, that's a pretty high price, they bought them for $375,000. And then the Washington Post goes on to say, it remains a mystery why the boats were deemed unnecessary so soon after they were bought. In other words, they're not taking delivery on them because they said, oh, they're not necessary. We understand why they were deemed not necessary right after they were bought, because the war was not necessary any more than these boats are necessary. The whole thing is about making money for the military industrial complex, those people who are paying off the senators to transfer money to them that way. And of course, the entire military industrial complex is going to metastasize into a surveillance state here in America. It's already doing that. We're already seeing this militarized equipment that is way over the top being brought to America. We see them approving all kinds of militarization of our police at very high expenses being driven by the federal government and the same industries that have been pushing us to war continuously ever since World War II. Now, what's going to happen in Iraq? We see uh, just recently that the U.S. is now ordering a partial evacuation of the Baghdad embassy as an aircraft carrier is arriving in the Gulf. Now, this is the gigantic U.S. embassy in Baghdad. This is 5,500 people who live there. It's a small city. Nearly a billion dollars they spent on this thing. And it looks like a fortress. This is about, as you see that picture there, that's the green zone. And they say the embassy is 104 acres, about the size of 80 football fields. Let's take a look at what this embassy looks like. Now, this is from an article about a year ago from Business Insider, where they're talking about the staggering cost of it. There's part of the embassy inside, but scroll down to that next picture. Look at that, a concrete wall. And that's what reminds me of what we saw at Bilderberg in uh, Denmark. This is a fortress set up to keep everybody out. Why? Because it's an illegitimate government. Listen, when we went to the uh, Asymmetric Warfare Center at Fort A.P. Hill, I had reviewed the speeches and the analysis of people who were fighting the Iraq War, colonels who were there. And they said, one of the things that you can tell about whether or not a government is legitimate or not is the amount of money they have to spend on security in order to maintain stability. Go back and take a look at that picture again. That is the picture of an illegitimate government. When you have to surround your embassy with that, you don't have the support of the people. You don't have a legitimate government there. How did they get to that point? Having never given us a truthful, reasonable explanation for why we needed to invade Iraq, why we needed to destroy Iraq, we now have no reason why we need to rebuild that country in the image of the Western bankers. This is an illegitimate government by their own standard of measurement. There is absolutely no reason for us to be there except for the profits that we mentioned earlier, except for the billions that are going to be made by the military industrial complex so that we can sell things that nobody needs like patrol boats in Afghanistan. That's what it's about. But it's also about a secret state. This is something that came up. I found a very interesting story that was linked on Drudge. The secret state, Trevor Paglin documents the hidden world of governmental surveillance from drone bases to black sites. And this is a story from The Independent. 
Now, this fellow is an artist, but he's also a political commentator. He started out as a map maker, and he started to notice that there were certain areas, and of course, he started before Google Maps was out there. He noticed that there were certain areas that were taken off, that were not shown. And that got his curiosity, especially because as a young boy, he was traveling around with his father to different military bases, and he talked to a lot of people that were involved in black ops. So he started following this secret world, and he takes very distant pictures, as you just saw there, d uh, pictures with very long lenses of these secret military installations. And this is what he had to say, and I thought it was very similar to what we were doing or trying to do at Bilderberg with our coverage of it. He says he's trying to show us a world, not as the media presents it, but as it is. And that's a world in which official secrecy has never been so well entrenched, ubiquitous, or extravagantly well funded. Boy, when I read that, it made me think of Bilderberg. You know, we show up, we can't hear what they're talking about inside. We can just get pictures of them from the outside, but we're there to document the fact that they're doing it, that they're there. It's a very important thing. And he also points out why we need to have an open and transparent society. He says about privacy, he says, I think mass surveillance is a bad idea because a surveillance society is one in which people understand that they're being constantly monitored. And when people understand that they're being constantly monitored, they're more conformist, they're less willing to take up controversial positions, and that kind of mass conformity is incompatible with democracy. And then he gives a second reason that it's a very dangerous idea. He talks about the linkage between transparency and civil liberties. So you can't have, if you don't have transparency, you're not going to have civil liberties. You cannot trade off your liberty in order to get security. When you trade off your liberty, you become a slave. You will be part of a security system, but it will be maximum security. And if there is no transparency in government, then you are going to be a slave as well. You're not going to have any civil liberties. That's why it's such a big deal when we go to military bases, when we go to the border, when they put gag orders on people covering the uncontrolled and encouraged immigration, massive immigration across our borders, that is being encouraged both by policy statements and by outright statements from our president and our vice president. And it's a very big deal when they threaten people who are working for Homeland Security, people who are working at the border, when they threaten them, not only with uh, employment sanctions, but with imprisonment. We have a society that is descending into secrecy and into tyranny. Well, stay with us because right after the break, we're going to be talking to Jakari Jackson and the rest of the InfoWars crew down at the Texas-Mexico border, and they're going to tell us what they see as people enter from Mexico into our surveillance society. Stay with us. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans 
Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Welcome back. Now, in just a few minutes, we're going to go to Jakari Jackson, the InfoWars crew that's down at the Texas-Mexico border. They're looking at this massive influx of illegal immigrants. We believe this is done by design. It's part of the warfare state and the welfare state. Both of those are dearly loved by one constituency or the other. The Democrats, the left, love the welfare state. And yet, what has it given anybody? It hasn't worked in this country. It hasn't worked in other countries. Again, look at Hugo Chavez's Venezuela, where the bankers got 700% on their return on their investment. But the people today have to leave the country in order to get water, let alone medicine. They're dying in numbers where they can't even get coffins to bury the dead. That's what the welfare state is doing for people in Venezuela. It's what it did for people in China under Mao. It's always a planned implosion so they can rebuild their new society on the ashes of what was there. And of course, we see that over and over and over again in other countries with the warfare state. No one benefits from it except for the military industrial complex, as we just pointed out. So both the left and the right love that, but those are the means of taking down, of collapsing the American economy. We're always accused of being racist whenever we talk about stopping the uncontrolled flow of immigrants in this country when we have a massive and exp expanding welfare state. Yet look at how the Mexican government itself treats immigration. Now this is going back to their general laws of 1999. They say that they would only welcome foreigners who would be useful to Mexican society. And they point out that foreigners could be barred from the country if they, quote, upset the equilibrium of the national demographics. They also said that they could be banned if they don't uh, behave and obey the laws of their own country. In other words, they're not going to allow criminals to come into Mexico. They have to be good citizens in their own country. And they also put in income restrictions. They have very definite restrictions on whether or not you'll be able to uh, stay in the country, whether or not you can take care of yourself. They're not going to bring you in as a burden on their welfare state. And yet we're supposed to do just the opposite. For example, very specifically, in 2012 in Yucatan, they said that you have to have income or deposits in a bank balance that are equivalent to 95,892 U.S. dollars in order to stay there. Or you have to have a monthly income that is equivalent to $1,918. That's up significantly from what it was before of just $1,200 per month. So they're not going to allow people to come in and just live off of the state there. They're not going to allow people to participate in the voting process to fundamentally change their legal structure. They don't even allow foreign citizens to participate uh, not only in the political life, but even to own property. So we're going to talk to Jakari Jackson and crew. We find out that uh, they get a little bit different treatment at the border than those who are coming across it illegally. Well, Jakari, tell us what's been going on down there. I understand at some point you got followed by the Border Patrol. They're looking out for you. They're not worried about the other people coming across, are they? Yeah, that, that's exactly right, David. As you can see behind me, we're right in front of uh, Mexico. There's just a small body of water separating us from Mexico. And there's Border Patrol. They're out here on their four-wheelers. They're out here in their trucks. They're out here in their speedboats. But, you know, we were a few miles away from here to looking at another place where we, we were told that there were a lot of illegals crossing. We didn't see any illegals ourselves, but we did get followed by the Border Patrol there. They followed us probably about two miles down the road, and then we stopped and turned around. And said, let's, let's see if these guys are really following us. So we stopped, we pulled over, turned around, and they started following us again. So it, it was quite comical that they were you know, looking at guys that had Texas plates. Meanwhile, you have all these illegals. If they want to find these guys, they can go to the Army bases. They can go to these Air Force bases if they're looking for illegal illegals crossing the border. That's right. And, and of course, people have seen uh, crossings during the daytime. But I imagine you're probably going to see more people crossing at night uh, than you will during the day, don't you think? I would, I would imagine so, too. You know, we're just working with the time we have. We're still out here in McAllen. Uh, we stopped at a, a local facility, and uh, one of the ladies was telling us some of the hot spots to go. So we were out checking out those areas. We also have a few more spots we're going to go to in the coming days. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, to spy them because we have seen them at the bus station, as I talked about in the Alex Jones radio show today. We saw them at the bus stations. They were being picked up 
uh, various church groups who, you know, fed them, clothed them, right. and got them back on a new bus to go to wherever their location was going. So, so hopefully we'll find some, some people out here crossing the border. So the immigrants are, the, the people who live there are telling you where the uh, illegals are crossing the border, because that's a regular thing. It's just that now it's changed in terms of the volume and in terms of